Hi, we're aware that for experienced web reports developers, the idea of switching tools can be quite daunting. For you web reports wizards, there's a strong muscle memory developed using the existing tool set. So what I'm going to illustrate here is that you don't have to completely replace your existing work process in order to benefit from the application analyzer. I'm going to demonstrate a few specific features that you could benefit from immediately without the need to convert to a new framework and without losing any production time. In this side-by-side -side comparison, the first thing we're going to look at is the editor and five reasons why even an experienced web reports developer might want to use the editor in the application analyzer. The first thing we're going to look at is validation. So let's open the classic editor. And in here, I'm going to add a small error. I'm going to find a nested tag, and I'm going to take out a space, a very minor thing to be wrong. But as soon as we try and validate this or add a version, we get an error. And the error simply tells you that there's an error somewhere in the header section. You can spend hours trying to solve a problem like that. So let's go into the editor for the application analyzer, which you can do directly like that. It's mounted the web report in question, along with any sub-web reports or any related web reports. We can look at that later. We'll uh, open up the editor. And again, I'm going to put the same error into the code. I'm going to take out a space in the same place. And we're going to select from our save menu here, detailed validation. And then, then you'll immediately see that we now have the correct line and exactly where the problem is. So that in itself is a pretty big boon to your development. While we're in the application analyzer editor, we can also look at a couple of other options here. And you'll notice there's something called draft save and draft save will save your syntax, whether or not there's an error, it saves it quickly and it won't affect the existing edit or the existing web report that's running for your users. This also allows us, we can go in there and do diffs on different versions. This is a little bit more powerful than the diff tool in later versions of content server in that you can pick any version against any version. So if you wanted to go back and compare these two versions, for example, you can do that. This diff tool also has a little bit more precision than the content server one. And again, it does allow you to do a comparison with some draft syntax, even if it hasn't been able to validate. Let's duplicate this screen so we can do some more comparisons. If we go back to the classic editor. Another thing you might find you need to do periodically is to go back to an earlier version of your source code. And with the classic editor, it's something like this. You go back to all of the versions and maybe drop back and try and find a particular version that has code in it that you want to compare. You can edit from there. You can look at the code. And then if that's not the right version, you go back and you then would have to edit and look at it another version. From the application analyzer, all you have to do is look at this menu here. It still has our draft in it, but we can jump back to any version. We can also look at the dates easily, go back and select an earlier version of the code. We can step forward or backwards immediately seeing the source code. I think one of the areas where the most gain in development time is realized is in the actual production or creation of syntax. With the existing editor, you do have some autocomplete, particularly if you have a lot of syntax already in your web report, a lot of things will pop up that you can use. But if you're trying to create tags, it really comes down to what is already there and taking a tag and adding on to it. Of course, you can literally type syntax and you have these controls up above, which you can use to drag and drop tags. This isn't particularly easy and you don't have any help directly associated and you need a certain amount of coordination to 
drag these to the right place. If you were then looking to pick, say, a constant from this list, you still have to do a drag and I'm running out of runway here. Try and place these tags in the correct place. Another example, let's say we're looking for an else clause. You have to look up and down through the list. Actually, I can't find the else clause, but presumably you could start to type LL underscore web report and maybe take if and then convert it to an else. The application analyzer, on the other hand, and I'm going to open it up into a full editor mode, has none of those buttons up above, but it does have an autocomplete for every single tag. So let's look at an example of how that would work. For constants, you simply start to type a dollar sign and you have all of the constants available. For uh, parameters, a similar kind of thing, you get a list of all available parameters and you simply type that symbol. So for any of those single symbols, variables, functions, strings, simply type the character and you get the tag. You can also, for static tags, you start to type a square bracket and either W for a web report or an R for a rep tag. So W immediately gives you all of the content control tags and slash R immediately gives you all of the data tags. So let's look at the idea of creating an if tag. Slash W I gives me if, maybe I want to put a constant in there. Maybe I want to compare it to a variable. I can create one like that. If I want an else clause, simple as that. So all of the tags and sub tags, including custom ones, are all available immediately by typing. You also have all of the same autocomplete that the legacy editor has, and you can choose whether you want everything, just the web reports ones we've created or the default ones. So that's a huge benefit and you can generate a vast amount of syntax in a very short period of time. Now let's look at another even more useful feature. When you're looking in the source in classic web reports, sometimes you want to know what different constants might be pointing to. And this tool, the analyzer, already provides a breakdown of all of the web reports that are being called. But even so, you might still want to know what different constants are doing or what they're pointing at. So here's an example of one we created and simply by control double clicking on this, it now shows us this particular constant and what web report it points to. You can change that, you can add a description, and for that matter, you can also mount it, which in this tool means we load it in the analyzer, and now we can edit that particular web report. Going back to the original source we were looking at, Let's look at a couple of other things. Here's one called subversion. We open it up and we see it doesn't actually have a value. If we create brand new constants, we can actually assign them information and simply save them from here without going to the constants tab. Now you see this particular constant now has the value in the description written into it. A similar feature I'd like to show is the ability to get context sensitive help for any tag or sub tag. So for example, if we do control single click as opposed to double click, we get the help here for a constant tag. I'm going to do the same thing on this sub tag and you'll see we get all of the help for this sub web report sub tag. This is very powerful and very useful. In addition to the ability to open the normal tag guide, you can get exactly the same help for each specific tag or sub tag just using a control click. All of these features are related to the analyzer editor. Obviously the application analyzer has a lot of other features and many of them uh, you don't really need to know about at this point. 
But there are a couple that you might find useful if you just opened up the application analyzer, which you can do from the admin menu. And if, for example, you look up an application on your system, if you're ever working with a customer and trying to understand how a particular application or a set of web reports fits together, we have a feature that you could use in isolation if needs be. It simply mounts all of the software branches for an application. And what that means is it crawls the application and identifies all the web reports in trees. So for example, you'll see here the entire tree of items for a particular application, starting with this one here that is comes off an active view. And you can drill down into these, and for that matter, if you want to, you can look at it as a horizontal tree. You can generate documentation like that. We also have a feature that if you've been filling in information for each object in the application, you can generate documentation, either a folder-based view or in the Web Reports software tree. This is printable, and you'll see every Web Report, in this case, uh, organized by folders with uh, the descriptions. And finally, um, we have built-in audits, so you can run an audit on any given application. In this case, this is one we're working on, and we're seeing that we have some constants that are being used that do not have definitions as of yet. This can be used on any application, um, and most of these features can also be used on folders with a group of web reports underneath. In this case here, we've selected an open text application, and you'll see that even there, we've identified a number of issues with the application. So you can run an audit, you can create documentation, or you can build all of the trees, organize all of the web reports in an application in order to be able to then audit that application. And this is a feature that we found very useful and we think you probably would too. Thanks for watching.